Okay. Get it hey, together. Hey, fam. Hey, what's up? Show on, fam. Hey, this is Tony. I'm going to try something with my squash. I've got some squash that we have growing now, but I'm going to try this new method. What we did is we bought a mosquito bed that has mosquito netting. I ordered on Amazon. It's just 30 bucks. And it comes in this little container here. Uh, so I'm going to pull it out. And let's, we're going to uh, see how big this thing really is. It unfolds pretty easily from what they were saying. Just kind of tap it and unfold it. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> okay. All right. There it is. There it is. Oh, it's got lace on it. What, what, we don't need that lace. We don't need fancy lace. Oh. Okay. All right. Let me see. I think I got to pop this part out. And there we go. Okay. This is what we have. This is going on my porch here, trying to keep it from getting caught in there. Alright, so here we go. There it is. It does take up some room. But there it is. It has netting at the bottom, as you can see. It's got uh, zippers here, where you can zip on both sides. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my squash in here. This is going to be my little squash housing and it's going to house the house the squash and so and you're going to put it in there to keep do what? the squash bugs off of it that prevents many people on youtube they have like the the mosquito netting on the screens mm -hmm. cages that they grow their squash in they never had a problem with squash bugs so this is my version of it i didn't want to have to go and build a box i bought this off of, and i'll put a link on it i bought this off of amazon it's only thirty dollars on amazon and it's a mosquito netting bed but it's, it's designed to keep mosquitoes out it's designed to keep squash bugs out if it can keep the mosquitoes out I know it can keep the squash bugs out because the squash bugs are much bigger so uh, there it is I got it it's, it's a little blue little cute little thing but it'll work and, and it has netting at the bottom and everything too so let's go I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, some of my pots. I got some air pots. This is the air pot I already had used. I just emptied it out. And I got a little, little mesh screen at the bottom. This is the air pot. I'm going to go get some soil for this one. And I'm going to put some soil in here and I'll start my first squash plant. Man, I watered it with that. Yeah, it's that's just the dry. outside. The outside oh, is going to okay. be dry because we don't have leaves over the top. But I already got the fertilizer in here. I've got the olive fish compost in here. A lot okay. of things I've already got in here. Okay. And we're just going to put it in here. And get it going. We got some other pots over there too I'm going to use for squash. That's why if you look on my porch you see a lot of pots that we already have there. I don't like to just kind of buy pots every year. I can clean and reuse the pots we have and that's fine. And this soil, like I said, it has a uh, it has azomite rock dust in this soil. It has the, it, as I showed you this morning, it's got some of the, the natural uh, scrappings we have, eggshells, things like that. It's in here. Uh, I got uh, uh, 555 organic fertilizer with it. And I have uh, the olive fish compost. It's a fish compost and I buy the azomite and the olive fish compost. I buy them like in 50, uh, 50 pound bags because it's cheaper that way when you buy in bulk. Because uh, so, when I bought them at the smaller bags, I, I paid one, one 50 pound bag will last me uh, two seasons. And But when I was buying them in the small bags, the, the olive fish compost and the azomite rock dust in the small bags, I bought enough in that one season to buy three big bags. So that's why I buy it in bulk. <laughs> Just so you know. So now we've got our soil in here. You know, and it, the top part is a little dry because it's sitting in the sun, but it is moist. It's already moist. I don't, don't ever put dry soil in your plant. You make sure your soil is moist when you're planting it because you put dry soil in there, it's going to be rock hard and the water wave, water won't get through it. You need to soak it. Like this is my, DD waters this just like she waters the plants every day. This is the compost pile I have. So she waters this like you do the plants. So this, there it is and I'm going to go put some seeds in here. And I'm going to be doing uh, seeds on the 
evergreen. It's just a dark green zucchini summer squash. We're doing that here. So what I'm gonna do is just poke a little hole in there like so. And I usually, it doesn't matter what I plant, I usually plant three seeds. I mean, I'm like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, so it's like three seeds I plant. <laughs> <laughs> for all my stuff. <laughs> it reminds me of the Trinity. Well, it's not Trinity, but it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I do that. And then this is a neat little tool you can buy from Amazon, too, that this, that gets you where you can plant this stuff in there. So I just got that. Cover that up. And then, uh, since we're going to put it in here, uh, we're going to put trays underneath. You, D, we got some trays that, that D, you want me to put underneath these. So the plants we put in here. Okay. So we have these trays. What we're gonna do with these, we're gonna go ahead and put this plant in here. And that tray of water is gonna hold it because Didi Dee Dee doesn't want the water going anywhere on the porch. So it'll go in the trays. You don't have to fill the trays up, but that'll catch the water. So now I can unzip my little, my little housing here. And we're just gonna go in here. And I'm gonna place the plant here. So that's my zucchini squash. You gonna water it? Or? And I'm gonna. Oh, you gonna put some on? I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I'm gonna water. I usually put the label on, oh. and then I water it. Let me show you how I do my labels. Okay. Okay. He, here's the deal with my labels. Here, uh, I, I've uh, I use these address. You get these address little, the small line ones. Uh, this is like a 51.95 template or the 18.294. Uh, I get I get these and put these on my labels here and I want to show you guys this because this method lasts for years okay uh, when I even when if I use permanent marker on this like last year you can't even hardly read it fades out and those things so you can't hardly read it so I put a label on here and I write in pencil uh, I already have a label for the green zucchini squash I've got a store-bought label that came that I'm going to use with that, but that my wife wants me to uh, put this uh, this butternut squash down. So I'm going to put uh, it's the Waltham butternut squash. So yeah, we'll put squash. I know I have to write small, but anyway, that's gonna stay on the label. And what I do is I take this this tape. This is the not the like the transparent tape, and I'm gonna run it over the bottom half of it there. And then I'm gonna run a piece over the top half of it, and this seals the labels. Now, of all the labels that I use, I bought the. I bought the bamboo ones. They turn black, so you can't read anything. Uh, and what I've done is I, I found this method to be good because some of the labels I have at work, we tape over them, and, and, and they, they're good years later. And so I just took that habit to home, and, and this is a label that's two years old that I've done, and it's got the tape on it. The jalapeno peppers is two years old, and you can still read it very clear labels, white it doesn't fade out from, uh, it doesn't fade out and you can get these white labels anywhere walmart home, any home store depot, walmart, walmart, walmart target home depot anywhere that has a gardening section they have the labels there and some of them don't you know some of them have a uh, uh a section there where you got various types of labels i just even if you have like the bamboo labels and you know they turn black everybody that know that everybody knows you have, the, you have the bamboo labels, they turn black on you, and, it, and it's black, and then your permanent marker is black, and you can't read nothing on it, it just gets dark black. You can even do this method with the bamboo to save your bamboo labels, and it'll still, this, this, this portion will stay, and, and it'll keep it there. So that's, these are the labels, this is how I do my labels, this is how it works, you know, and so uh, this, is, this works for me, and like I said, this is two years old, and see, and all the other labels I get out there, they just fade, they just fade. They fade out, so that's how I do it with that. So we're gonna do uh, the butternut squash, and what other squash you want to do, love? No, let's see. The butternut squash we said. Uh, the yellow long squash is that have okay. one of those? 
Yeah, I think I do have. Do you want to do the little round ones? Well, too? this one says golden zucchini. Oh. So I guess that's what is that what it is here? Squash, table king, bush, uh, squash, acorn. I I guess we'll do this golden zucchini. Okay. And I'll go ahead and uh, put my label on this one. And it's the same thing. Okay, and this is going to be golden zucchini squash. Make sure I spell zucchini right. Don't be looking at my writing, y'all. <laughs> I scribble too sometimes. <laughs> but here it is. I'm gonna just go ahead and tape over that, and the tape stays on. It does. Uh, like I said, that jalapeno one is two years old, and it still looks good. So this is what works for me when it comes to labeling. It's and, and this is that transparent. Like that. This is the transparent tape you mm -hmm. want to get. The one that's clear doesn't have the foggy look to it. Yeah. So, and uh, so we got the Waltham butternut, I have golden zucchini, and then I have, um, I'll probably do one more. Okay. I'll probably do one more. Uh, and I can use, like I said, I can use the back side of the labels. I'll use the back side of this since I've already have it in here. We can do one more, and I'm gonna do this squash because I see this squash. I never grown it, but I have. I to. know. I'm, I'm curious about that one too. I see different mm -hmm. people growing that one. So, Binnings. It's green tent. Green tent summer squash. Okay, so I'll just use the back side, even though that, that's still good on that side. I'll still use the back side of that. I can use both sides of the label in this case. <laughs> so I can swap it around. So I'm going to use the back side and take that over that. And I'll take another piece and tape it across the top. Just make sure the whole label is covered. That's why I use two pieces of tape to make sure the entire label is covered. And that sticks on around. That sticks on there real good. Okay. So we have this, uh, this, the golden zucchini, and we have the butternut. So we're going to go ahead and go out and, and do some planting. Okay. Water in after I put my label on something. And I'm going to water it in some. So I can just so the soil can kind of surround itself. And that, it's the, the soil is pretty wet. Ready. And we'll wash those seeds in. Let's get those going. I love this little net. Okay, and I got some pots I already have. Um, so I know butternut squash. I have this. I have this pot right here. So what I'm going to use? It's going to use some pots I already have. <laughs> And I'm gonna clip these on here. Buy these from the store, but sometimes you don't want to just mm -hmm. throw away your pots. They're good pots. You can reuse them. Well, you want to keep them. You can use yeah. them, you know. And I'm gonna put some of my rocks here in the bottom where these holes are. So I just put them in aeration there around. The holes are on the outside here. Mm -hmm. These outside edges where the holes are. So I just surround this whole deal. And that helps with filtration, with right? So it's filtration. It's and Drainage and those things. So yeah, that's what I do. And then I'm gonna go and put the soil on top. I know most of the the plants and stuff that I have in here, or the not the plants, but the vegetables and things we have in here are at the bottom because we cover mm. them up. So I get those in there at the bottom, yeah. with the, all the good stuff. And then there you go. I get the topsoil, which is mainly what we use for a cover. Start pouring that in there. Yeah, but it's convenient with you having the dirt in the barrel like that. Yeah, it is. I like it up higher too because you're not doing a lot of bending over. Yes. You get older, you don't like all that. Well, man. Bending over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So.
so. What lead farmer say we grown steady? Mm-hmm. We grown steady. So I've already got this soil mixed and everything. This has got everything mixed in it. So I don't have to mix anything. I already mixed it. And now I just come out here and just mm -hmm. plug plug it in. Okay. Where I need to plug it in. So how high do you put the dirt in there? It doesn't it doesn't matter. Okay. I just put it in there to where it's not running out. <laughs> okay. It just depends on we put more dirt in here this time because we had a lot of table scraps in here. Mm -hmm. Like you see there. And also when you add the water it's gonna kinda go down too yeah. anyway, so you gotta suffice for that. Yeah. And then I let the seeds grow. When I see the seeds growing and start developing leaves and getting strong, then I'll go ahead and put some mulch in there. You know, things okay. like that. Okay. I can't put mulch in there now. I can put in the mulch. Uh, I can use the lemongrass. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sure can. And, and, and I can we use have the lemongrass to put in there. The lemongrass is not, it's a good mulch to use. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm not packing it down too hard, even though it's, I'm packing it some. It's not yeah. too tight. I like the soil kind of uh, spongy-like. So that's why I like to keep my soil gotcha. uh, spongy-like. Okay. So let's go back on the porch because this sun ain't no joke in Texas right no. now. <laughs> so here's my little tool and I'm going to go in the center and I'm just going to plug it in a little hole there. Yeah, I can plug it down a little bit more on this one. Mm -hmm. And this got the measurements too if you want to go one and a half, one, two, uh, you know, however your measurements are. Just got it on there, so it's a pretty neat tool to use. This one's gonna be, I'm gonna use the, uh, the butternut for this one. I use the butternut here. Okay, and like I said, I always, I do three seeds. You know, some of them say two to three or whatever, but my number is three. <laughs> Well, it's always kind of best. I've heard people say to kind of overseed if you're not yeah, quite then, sure because you want to make sure everything germinates. Yeah, and you're, but if they don't, then you have yeah. some plants to choose from. And your strongest one is going to survive. There so you go. Your strongest one is going to, to have a survival of the strongest. Yeah. So I've got those seeds covered there. That's good there. Yeah. So can you show me the measurements on your little stick again? I think I missed it earlier. Okay. So they can see. These are. It's kind of hard to see, but there you go. So they kind of see it's got notches on there. Inches and one centimeters. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it says inches here on this side, and it says centimeters on that side. Alright. So it's kind of. I know it's kind of hard, but you yeah. get the gist of it. Yeah. If you have it that way, mm -hmm. you may see it better. Yeah. It's a handy tool to use, though. <laughs> <laughs> so now. I'm going to put a tray under this. I'm going to tray up everything because the teacher wants everything in her trays. Yeah, her well, trays. I'm looking at... And then I'm going to put the label, like I said, once I put the label in here... The pot's not drying out. Once I put the labels in here, yeah. I'm going to water it in. Yeah. That's what reminds me to water my plants is put in, when I put in the label. Yeah. So I can water it in. Give it a little more water. I'm looking at the plants being more self-sufficient once they start yeah. waking, pulling the water up themselves. That way I'm not having to open and close the netting because I don't want to let that, uh, what is it, that moth yeah, and put I the got squash another, bugs I, in. I, I've got a, a beautiful surprise for you, hon, that so, I will show you. Once the plants start coming up, I, got, I have a beautiful surprise. See, you can toss it up top. When you open this up, you can toss this up top so it's out of, it's out of the way. Okay. Now I'm going to put this squash plant in here. And it's got its cage. Okay. okay. Squash plants, I, I, I like to let them cage up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pack it in. <laughs> I'm going to pack, pack this it one in, in y'all. Oh, goodness. Okay. And even on this squash, I think I'm going to do this cage over here. Thinking, yeah, that kind of fits around. It snaps around these air pots. It snaps around there perfectly. So that's yeah. on there. So that's the cage on that one. All right. So let's go down. <laughs> yeah, because I want it to be to where I don't have to be going in and out of there too much for anything. Yeah. Just let it grow. Yeah. Um, so yeah. They look good. So they're zipped in. They're good. They're protected. I say thirty dollars. Nice. Thirty dollars. You can have it. I like that. And they not, fold right not, back. Not up. have to worry about vine borers, none of the mm -hmm. squash bugs, anything ever again. 
keeps all that stuff out. And I've seen people on YouTube that have this stuff. People on YouTube that have this, it works so good. They just go out. Only thing about it is, here's the thing. Your bees don't go in, your pollinators don't go in. So, you have to go in and pollinate the flowers. But mm -hmm. we do that anyway with mm -hmm. our squash. We see our squash growing, we pollinate manually anyway. So, we'll be pollinating these also manually. And I am sweating, right? <laughs> Okay. And there's some water going to come out the bottom too. There's going to be some water come out the bottom. You don't have to feel it. But the thing is, you always, even though you have these trays underneath, uh, my brothers and sisters, you always water these plants from the top with the trays underneath. You don't want to get in the habit of just saying, I got a water yeah, tray, I'm just going to add water good. here. Well, what happens if you just add water here, and if it's not wicking up enough through here good, it's going to dry out in here. So mm -hmm. your plant's gonna be it's gonna be a dry area in the middle where no water is reaching, mm -hmm. and then your plants are gonna die off on you because they're not getting enough water. And so you want to always practice watering from the top so it keeps that wick all the way down good. Yes. And then the plants will drink the excess water, and you'll see it; they'll start drinking it. But if you come out here and it's a week later and it's still the level, the same water level that you had when you first poured it in, this is at the same water level down here. If you come out here a week later and it's still there, your plant's not drinking. So you need to get it on the top, wick it back down so your plants can drink the water they need. This is kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's protected, y'all. Yes. No squash bugs. I'm gonna hit these. Because those boar worms and, come and, from a moth. And because this is you like know. June, mm -hmm. I'm growing these on the porch. These are going to have the east sun hitting them in the morning. And then it's going to have shade throughout the rest of the day because it's later. Mm -hmm. uh, I do succession planting too. Many people do succession planting where they like tomatoes plants. I have some tomato plants I'm going to plant today. I have some that are already ready producing tomatoes. So succession planting means you're going to have the same vegetables throughout the year? Yeah. You're going to like say for instance when your tomato plants are fully produced and they're done then succession planting is you, you plant one maybe a month or two later or some people plant one every month mm -hmm. you know so they, they get a, that new plant starts producing when the other ones are done mm -hmm. so that new one is still going to kick out tomatoes and things and, and squash and whatever else you just got to be mindful of like late planter squash it will do good but you need a little sun on it and then you need more shade on it when it comes to time this June time frame mm -hmm. and it'll do fine It'll do fine. Mm -hmm. it, 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 does, it does fine. I just, I'm just ending my battle with the vine bores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm telling y'all for $30, you better get this. Yeah. <laughs> this is nice. It's easy. Yeah. The zippers are good. You know, this is for people to, to take camping with them to sleep in. You can put a mattress at the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought it was going to be too huge for this porch, but you, you don't have to stretch, spread it out. It, it does, it fits fine in this spot right here on the porch. Yeah, so, I mean, it fits fine. We still have our know. walkway. Yeah, so. we still have our walkway yeah. and, you know. Okay, so, yeah. uh, let's see. So is that the last one? Or no, we I need one, one more. more. I'm going to do one more. Maybe I'll do an air pot so I can show y'all air pots. Um, actually, our corn is in air pots. Here. And these are air pots. It's got the holes on the side and it's then the other. I've had these air pots over two years now. Yeah. Uh, and, but I'm telling and you, you can get those from Amazon, right? Uh, yeah, the, uh, Amazon. I'll put a link on my air pots. The one I got, you got different sizes. This is like seven and a half gallon. They have five gallon. They have two and a half gallon. I have the small one I use over there. I think it's a two gallon, two and a half or three gallon one uh, that I have the, the zucchini squash in. But these air pots grow your stuff. I'm telling you, don't knock them. I, I, year after year, I trust these things. These things are so wonderful. And I never grew, I grew corn even in the raised beds over there, and it, it grew okay. But in the air pots, this corn grows like crazy. Just look at this corn. I never could grow corn this tall in, those, in the raised beds. Yeah. But in these air pots, some, it, it likes the air pots for some reason. Corn yeah, for some it. reason. It looks like it our, our ears are growing a lot better, yeah. a lot thicker and everything. Everything is just coming together with the air pots. Yeah. So, so I the can't AirPods, complain. 
I mean, they're 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 not the the, the what you call the name brand ones, but mm -mm. the versions I have, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, these is two years. I have these for over two years. They're working fine, and I'm going to use them, you know, next year and whatever else. So uh, whether they're knockoff brand or the name brand, I, I'll give you the link the ones I have. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they've been proven for two years. Okay, and I even have a I even have a, a review on it that shows you, you know, when I got it and when I did my first review, it was like six or seven months after I bought them. It was July of 2019. That's mm -hmm. when I did the review. That was about six or seven months after I bought them, just to put the review in, let them know how good they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then now here we go, you know, over two years later, I'm still using these same AirPods. I got this whole, she can show you this whole line. That's okra, grows in the AirPods. All my okra I grew last year, the tall okra was AirPods. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's watermelon, air pots, perfect. These are seven and a half gallons. That's corn, corn, beans. Uh, these are, this is the watermelon over here. And this is orange watermelon. Orange watermelon is one of the most difficult watermelons to grow. And I've got them growing like crazy out of these air pots. Much success. Mm -hmm. uh, when we saw, we showed you earlier, all of the watermelons that are growing. You know, we showed you earlier, you know, there's a watermelon there. Here's another one growing here. Hang on you dude, yeah, let's get a good view. Okay, she wants to get a good view. There you go. There's a, a watermelon there, yeah. and that's growing there. And then there's a, another one over here that's oh, they growing. they are a lot bigger than what. That's one oh, here man. growing, and then back here. Uh, this is a watermelon growing here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got one over here growing. As you can tell, we we trying to get some watermelon in. Mm, yeah. This boy love watermelon. Yes, I do. And here's the biggest one over here. Yeah, that's a watermelon. We showed that this morning too. But uh, I just here. Oh wow, we found another one. I didn't know. Look at that one. Wow. I didn't even see that. I didn't one. even see that one. Oh wow, we Let's found another one. You see that one? If you get yeah. that. Oh, hold on. If you get that on the screen. There you mm -hmm. go. There's one growing there. Here's one growing there. There's a bigger one growing there. Mm -hmm. So, wow. I didn't even see that one. That just stuck out on me. So, we're going to be doing the watermelon thing, but that's all right. It's healthy. Yeah. When I realized how healthy it was, because coming up, oh, I never guys. really was a watermelon eater, but now that I know the nutrients and stuff. Hey, I tell you what. Make your chef salad, okay? Mm. Chop up you some uh, turkey pastrami. Go to the store and get sliced turkey pastrami. Get uh, like a, a Gouda cheese sliced, chop that up, chop the Gouda cheese up, put kale, get the crinkle kale, use that for lettuce and this, that no lettuce, use kale, mm -hmm. chop the kale up, put the kale in the bowl, put your tomatoes in there, put your green onions in there, your chopped turkey, your chopped uh, your chop, uh, Gouda cheese, uh, and you can chop up cucumbers in there. Mm -hmm. And then take watermelon and chop up watermelon, put it over the top, and add a little sea salt to that watermelon. Tell me how that salad tastes. I guarantee you it's going to be one of the best salads you've ever had. Because it's one of the best I've ever had. I make it like that every day. Just to, <laughs> That's why if you, if you see my kale plant over there, I done told you to wore that kale plant out. I told that thing up, so I'm going to have to grow more kale for mm -hmm. me. <laughs> for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And I'm just going to put this over the bottom of it as much as possible. Yeah, there it goes, there. I just put it over the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just get it and you can get that, that cloth that's stuff. Keep, it's like from the, Walmart. That's to keep the soil, because the air pots, if you look at it, it has a, it, it's lifted up off the ground a little bit, so it comes up. It's not all the way on the ground. So if you're not careful, your soil can come through this and drop into the deal. So this is to keep the soil up in the pot itself instead of having the soil drop through. Now you can get that just about anywhere, right? Yeah. Like yeah. at a garden center? Yeah, yeah, that's just your landscaping uh, fabric. Okay. Okay, I can start here, there. Just roll it. There we go, there we go. There you go, there you go. So they interlock here, and then that's your air pot, and you just take these screws Oh, 
can see that's covered and everything to where your soil is not going to be falling out all over the place. But some of them people don't even, they just took this, they don't even put this in. Like in the, some of the corn in the ground, I don't even put this bottom in. I just got it open to where the corn can grow into the ground if it wants to, however it wants. You know, and so I don't even really need the rocks in here. This is just going to be soil. Yeah, because it already Plus has this, filtration this with portion, the cloth. This portion, see how it's, this, this is going to keep it off the ground. So it's going to be aerated. This the air. This this middle part right here keeps it off the ground, so it's gonna mm. have air underneath. The other pots don't have that. They sit flat on the ground, so that's why I put the rocks in there so it can have that aeration. But this automatically lifts it off to keep the air underneath. When you were doing your your hybrids, one thing about hybrids, they're well, not bad. It's just that when a certain plant is produced on a hybrid, uh, when you plant the seeds of that plant. You're not guaranteed you're going to get that plant that was produced that you ate from. Mm. You can get one, one parent or the other parent on a hybrid, not both. So the hybrids is just not, it's not guaranteed you're going to get the, like the rainbow watermelon I have with the, the white Japanese melon and the orange and the red watermelon. And it was rainbow and it mm. tasted so good. But when I plant those seeds, I may only get one of those melons. I may get a red meat watermelon, I may get a yellow meat, or orange meat watermelon, or I may get the white Japanese um, watermelon that I had. I've never seen a white watermelon like that. They said it's kind of similar to a honeydew melon. Oh, okay. But it, it, it tasted so good. <laughs> I was like, I don't know which ones taste the best. They all three tasted real good together, but it was only one we had that, like that, but it had a lot of seeds. So I have the seeds of it, and I'm, I'm saving the seeds for Arizona. So I'm going to plant that in Arizona just to see how it does. So I won't plant that here. I'm saving it for Arizona just to see how it does because, oh my goodness. Uh, that was a good watermelon. That thing was so good, it hurt. <laughs> I was like, it hurt to eat the last piece of it. You eat the last, <laughs> eat, eat the last piece and you just regret it. It's like, oh. You know, so... Yeah, so that was good. So you see my watermelon in here, these things right here. So you want to keep these covered so the so the, the possums and all that. Yeah, your possums won't be digging uh, through here. They will. They smell it. They'll dig possums. in here. And then you said dog on possum. <laughs> <laughs> we keep them covered. We keep them covered. This came from a plant, so I need to water and break this down before I mix it in with this. I'm just gonna keep this over here in the dry part. I just got this out of one of those planters. So I'm going to break this down before I mix it in on this compost. I'm going to break it down. It's just going to be on this edge. So when I water it, I'm going to break it down. Uh, see, there's the worm there. Big boogers. Mm -hmm. yeah. See him? He's happy, happy, joy, joy. He's eating too. Mm -hmm. Getting fat. Yeah, he's getting fat. <laughs> I know. But leave him on in there. Do his thing. Yep. So, yeah, but they, they will eat the food and they will poop out the food, the worm castings and the micronutrients and all that. Worm poop is the healthiest poop your plants could ever have. Don't ever, ever get as many worms as you can. The red, uh, red wigglers. I keep calling them red sliders, but they're red wigglers. Okay, so this is, has the soil in it and we're ready to go. I think this is my last pot. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, this is the stuff for your plants. Okay, oh, this, this is more deal. bloom. Alaska more bloom. Mm -hmm. It's a 0 10 10. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's in a small bottle there. I use that along with this fish fertilizer, which is 511. Mm -hmm. It's a 511, and I put them together now. In, in a gallon jug, you want to use one tablespoon of this. And in that same gallon jug, you want to use two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of this. Okay? So, two teaspoons per gallon of this More Bloom 01010. And one tablespoon per gallon of the fish fertilizer 511. Okay. That's, that's feed your plants. Now, you only do that, you only need to feed them one day out of the week with this. Okay? Uh, and, uh, that's going to be Sunday. Today is Sunday. Yes. So I'm going to, my goodness. See, this is why we have paper towels out here. Mm -hmm. 
because Tony is drenching wet. He is drenched. See, the possum came and ate all our seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, possum. Okay, but this Texas heat is something. It's, it's yeah, in the shade. It's hot. <laughs> I'm sweating in the shade. Uh, okay, so so uh. that 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 five one one and that zero ten ten. That's every Sunday. Okay, and you want to take it and you want to pretty much water the base of your plants with it. You know. Uh, and just get, kind of get that in your soil, let the plants drink. You, you want to feed your plants there, okay? That's on Sunday. Now, I'm going to show you what I do on Thursday. I'll, bring, I'll be right back. And now on, on Thursdays, okay, I do the 501 on Sunday. On Thursday, I do uh, this. Dee Dee puts her banana peels in this gallon jug of water, right? That's what she does on Thursdays. It's a gallon jug. It's got but water, it's got banana peels in this is banana water. And what I do, like, I build up the banana peels. I'll take them after I finish eating my banana, take the peel, chop it up. I put it in the freezer bag, put it in the freezer, and then once I get so many, then I'll just put it in that. Yeah, and I'll, that, make, uh, I'll, make, sure, I'll make sure it steeps yeah. in there for at least 48 hours. Mm -hmm. To get all, at least 48 hours. You can keep them in there forever if you want, but I, I, since I have that in the house, <laughs> not outside, because outside it gets, woo, it gets kind of tough with this heat and stuff. But I have it in the house where I can come in and pour it out. And I, that's my whole gallon, my gallon of water that I use on Thursday. That's it. That's the gallon of water. And then what I do is I can add another gallon of water with it because I have this two-gallon sprayer. I just put them in here. Yeah. Is, this is my feeder, the Sure Spray. So this is two gallons. And so what I do is I add another gallon of water to that one gallon of water. And then that other, and when I have them in there as a feeder on Thursday, I use the banana water okay the whole gallon of banana water i put another gallon of water in there for my two gallons and this is compost tea right here i put one one fourth cup of compost tea in that banana water one fourth cup okay goes in that banana water compost tea all right and then i put uh, one tablespoon since it's two gallons if it's one gallon one gallon you want to use uh, probably a teaspoon in one gallon but since I'm using two gallons I, I use a tablespoon of Epsom salt. Now Epsom salt will put magnesium in the soil? It does and it makes the plants it makes the plants handle the sun the photosynthesis and things like okay. that. It handles the sun better uh, uh, when you have that make that Epsom salt. And Epsom salt yeah. is good. I mean, you just have to put it in low quantities. You can't go strong with Epsom salt yeah, because you can't cause your plants to die out. It's so you want to go in low quantities and some people use Epsom salt maybe two or three days out of the week, you know. But mm -hmm. since I do the 511 and the 0 10, 10 on Sunday, I do the banana water, my compost tea, and the Epsom salt on Thursdays. Those are my feeding days, okay. Yeah. So you want feeding days. You want at least two feeding days out of the week. You know, and mm -hmm. you want to choose what you're going to feed your plants. Okay, even though you have fertilizer in the ground, they're going to eat off of that. It's going to drain. The worms are going to go in there and eat. It takes a while for some of that to to really break down. You're feeding your plants need to eat also, so you want to have feeding days for your plants. And most of the people that I, I watch on YouTube, and all these people, they they have like the compost teas. They have like the day, things they use to feed their plants with, and if it is absolutely 100% sunny out here we got some clouds out here but it actually sounds like rain is about to come down actually sounds like rain is coming down and i'm looking for it and i don't see it okay. but it sounds like the rain is coming down so well, we you have know some what? clouds I, I, you know when elder was talking about how he was wanting to do his rain dance i said you need to do your rain dance so we can get some rain here in texas <laughs> <laughs> people were laughing but i was so serious because it's yeah we mm -hmm. need it it's hot. And, and like I said, good good fertilizers. Garden Tone. This is an overall good fertilizer. Yeah. For your, it's three four four. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me share this with you. Okay, this is Garden Tone. It's an overall good fertilizer for all your plants. It's three four four. Okay. I just want to share something with you. A lot of a lot of people get these high number fertilizers. You know, and. That's not good. I've though, seen right? the best production out of my plants with these lower numbers, ten or below mm. fertilizers. You know, and if I see a plant struggling, you know, like if I see my tomato plants kind of struggling or whatever else, then I may resort to something a little more. You know, but more likely when I just do these normal fertilizers, I've had the best plants, the best, the best production, the best harvest. Uh, 
and, and it just seemed like the lower numbers, the plants handle those lower numbers a lot better. So I I go with the lower numbers. In this garden tone, this is there's so many gardeners that are professionals that use this. It's it's good. That's good stuff. Just to let you know. You know, and then I purchased some worm castings at times, but now that I know that I'm gonna get some more worms from my garden, you know. There's some worm castings I get, and then I get some from uh, the organic uh, DFW, the organic uh, uh, gardeners there. I get some from him. His is a better mm -hmm. quality worm casting, but this is like $12.99 at Callaway's. But DFW Organic, this same size bag from him, it's very high quality. It's about $50. <laughs> 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 so, so there's a difference. <laughs> yeah. There is a difference. And then you want to have your, uh, your diatomaceous earth. This, this this is a big bag. I should have bought a smaller bag. Now what does that but do? This is food grade. This is what protects your plants from the cr creepy crawlers, the soft the soft uh, predators, the soft body predators and things like that. Okay. And when they eat this, it actually it actually acts like a glass to their body. It kind of shreds them. But it's okay. a food grade. But it's food grade, it's so it's not us. toxic for us. Mm -mm, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's food grade, but it just the soft body a lot of the soft body like it like people use it on their squash plants and, yeah for the for the uh squash bugs yeah squash vine, bugs, vine boards when they eat this it kills them so oh. they use them on the squash yeah. plants for that reason so that's the thing but the thing is is you can't let your pollinators get a hold of this because this, yeah, will, this will destroy your pollinators too, too. so oh. uh yeah so you have to put that at the base of your plant in most cases uh to keep the pollinators away from it you don't want to kill your bees because uh, man, bees we need for our gardens to pollinate. Now, do you do BT? When do you do that? BT, yeah, BT. Um, let me go get it. I'll be right back. Monterey BT. This is what I use for controlling caterpillars uh, for the pest on my plants. BT is organic. It's for organic gardening, biological. It's for organic gardening, as you can see here. Okay, so this is what I swear by. <laughs> it works it works for me now with the BT you can add that uh, let me see how do I add BT I think I use let me make sure I think I use uh, per gallon sometimes I read the labels on some of this okay it says mix two fluid ounces per three gallons of water which is four teaspoons per gallon okay so it's a so tablespoon four, per gallon. Yeah, it's a tablespoon and a little bit more. Yeah. Because a tablespoon is what? Three teaspoons. Right? And so that says four. Okay. Four teaspoons per gallon. So uh, so we go with four teaspoons per gallon of the BT. Mm -hmm. You can add, this is a organic, just a peppermint oil, right? When I do the BT, I put peppermint oil in there. That's, that handles the pest. That handles my peppermint spray over the oh to get the ward off all the bugs that don't like the smell of peppermint I put that oil in there you can use that peppermint oil or if you don't have peppermint oil you can use the neem oil instead but with BT I usually use some type of oil when I spray it so it'll be either this neem oil or it'll be the peppermint oil either one you don't have to use both it's either or okay so that's what I use there the neem oil but when I when you put an oil in something you want to put when you put oil in your in there, you want to put some type of detergent with it, but it's not. I don't use the chemical detergents. I use a natural vegetable-based detergent, and that's going to be your pure pure Castile soap with Dr. Broner's. This is what I use. This has eucalyptus, and eucalyptus uh, wards off a lot of pests too. So I get the soap with the eucalyptus in it. Kill two birds with one stone, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and so that's it. I put that in there, and I'll probably in a gallon. I'll probably put one teaspoon of that in there. Okay. And let it dissipate and shake up the oil. It'll dissipate the oil in there real good, and then the oil will adhere. Things will it will stay on your plants a little bit longer when you do it that way. And that uh, Castile soap is like healthy for your plants. It's 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 vegan based, and like I said, people out there in Arizona, <laughs> y'all can use Castile soap for vegan based uh, vegetable based soap. You can use it to wash your body with, uh, mm -hmm. wash your hair. They have it all in one. That's for everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's real good stuff. So. Just want to let you know, uh, family, uh, this is what we got going, and we're going to try it out. It's in the netting. I think the netting, I'll put the link uh, 
it works fine, it's sealed fine, everything's good. Okay, family, we're going to say shalom, much love and much respect. Uh, we love y'all and hope you learned something from us. You know, we, we're not the professionals, but we, what we know, we try and show and be a blessing to people with. So we want to share with you because we are having very good, successful growth in our garden right now. We're happy about it. So we want to share it with you as our family and we'll give you this information and be a blessing to you. Much love, much respect, family. Shalom. Shalom.